So, I am African American. Right. Grew up on the south side of Chicago, right. African American. I share no other connections to that of the black diaspora outside of that that would connect me to American slavery. So I am not Haitian, I am not Jamaican, I'm not Dominican, I'm African American. Just black. Yo, nigga black, that's my whole <laughs> concept, right? Oh. Nigga black. So, one day, while I was trying to make the New Yorican team in 2014, I got on a train after losing, as I typically did at that time. And I was on a train and I overheard two Haitian men having a conversation. And the conversation that they were having, they said, you know what? You know what the issue is with those black folk, man, is, you know, you don't want to know why they so uncouth, why they just undisciplined, why they do everything wrong, why they've been here so long and allow immigrants to surpass them. It's because they don't have a culture. They possess no culture and it is your culture that gives you your esteem. It's your culture that gives you your purpose. It gives you something that you can use, that you can lean on and move forward. And so I'm over here in this conversation and I'm like, nigga, <laughs> right? But it isn't the first time that I've particularly heard that particular statement said, not only by people that don't look like me, but people that do. And that's when I realized that for my entire life, I would spend the rest of my life identifying of what African-American culture is. Because apparently no one believes that it exists. So here's my question to some of you all in the room. What are some aspects of culture, spit out culture to me. Music, Music. Art. Music. Oh, is it really good one? Music Dance. is one, right? Yeah. Art, traditions. Dance. Right, Dance. traditions is another good one. Someone else. Language. Vernacular. Language is a good yes. one. Yes. Vernacular, yes. right? Movement. Hair. And I, and I really think, Hair. I think language and vernacular is a good place to start, right? Mm -hmm. And of course, in, in in the hood, you know, we speak, you know, we speak Lawrence. phonics. Right. <laughs> so perhaps just to start this night by informing you that I am bilingual. That the Queen's English that I speak so eloquently before you now is not my first language, no. My grandmother never used such diction when she spoke me up in the welfare line amongst the other dwellers. Or when she called down to me from the project window for dinner, no, we spoke a more southern fried English. This rhetorical recipe has been in my family for generations, Grandma said. Big Mama hid it under her tongue when she had it for northern cities doing a great migration. See, scholars call it African-American vernacular English, but my guys, they call it slang. The man calls it Ebonics. I call it America's Creole. The last remaining squad birthed from a European and African pigeon turned into the dialect of the Doughboys, the bass that appears in a rapper's rhythmic rhetoric spoken everywhere from the trap house to the liquor store, from the HIV test the clinic to the bus stop. Ebonics is the official language of the undefined black culture. The native tongue to the underrepresented black American along before I received liberal art degrees and stood on opposing and academic settings, I was born on the south side of Chicago and managed to garner up enough street credit from the School of Hard Knocks to qualify me to teach you all a few of my language's essentials. So hipsters, hope you have your notepads ready because this, well this is Ebonics 101. Mm. <laughs> Chapter 1. Any English word that holds an I-N combination where the I becomes an A. Like Billie Holiday couldn't sing, that girl could sing. Yeah. And Martin did all that walking, I wonder if him feet stank. Traveled all the miles just to hear Freedom ring. I wonder what he was thinking. Mm. Chapter two. Any English word that holds an O-R combination with an R sound becomes silent. Like Emmett screaming, don't beat me no more. Like Rodney screaming, don't beat me no more. Like Trayvon asking, what is you following me for? Chapter three. So any English word that was an ER combination where the ER becomes an A. Like in the great quote from the linguistic scholar Miss Lauren Hill. And even after all my logic and my theory, I had a motherfucker so you idiot niggas hear me. See, there's culture in these words. The bended back of my speech comes from years of carrying the black experience. The verbal diaspora of Africa shapes our spine. We Cross our T's like the Middle Passage, dot our I's with strange fruit, curve our S's with Middle Atlantic roots. You cannot expect us to be slaves to your phonetics forever. And just like our history, we would defy the structure of your Jim Crow grammar. Refuse to speak within the lines of your Mason Dixon diction. You cannot correct this, context this, connotate my accomplishments. C, me, B, black. Male, use double negative to make positive. He will write into the black story no longer subsists. He will write into the clinch pen is synonymous with a clinch fist. He will write into the black male is able to live, be, exist, class dismissed. Ooh.